Uh, Citigroup also just came out with its oil forecast for the year. And one theme standing out here is that it looks like 2008 all over again. Oil market fundamentals will give in to a deteriorating environment. Here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with me is Seth Kleinman. He's head of energy research at Citi. Uh, Seth, uh, your forecast for the new year is what exactly? What's your target for oil? $110 average Brent. We're actually Brent. pretty constructive oil, oil for 2010. Uh, I wouldn't get too excited about the numbers that we just got. I mean, I think a lot of what's going on there is just refiners trying to manage their inventories mm -hmm. for tax considerations heading into the end of the year. But that said, Globally, the market is pretty tight. Inventories are pretty lean. We're running with very low levels of spare capacity, and the risks to supply are almost laughably long. Well, you say there is a pain point for oil that is far away from $99 a barrel right now. When do you think we're going to hit those levels? Well, when we're talking about the pain point, I mean, we're, well, A, we're referring we're to Brent. At Brent, not West Well, Texas. but even WTI. We think that the WTI Brent ARB comes into uh, seven, eight dollars, but could come under some pressure later in 2012. But we're looking for, the way we talk about the pain point, we think that there's, uh, that oil is acting as a constraint on global GDP. Mm -hmm. We think that oil needs to get to around the, it's kind of capped at around $120 level, absent uh, supply disruption, because at around that level, that's where oil starts to do some damage to global GDP. And so that's how it constrains demand growth balances the market that way. Now, you saw the United States State Department uh, offering its voice in support of what Europe is considering right now in mm -hmm. terms of uh, further sanctions, embargoes uh, on Iranian mm -hmm. crude oil supply. Uh, what are you banking on in terms of a possible disruption and how meaningful that could be? Well, you know, ascribing a particular probability to any one of these things is pretty hard. But here you have EU sanctions on Iran, EU sanctions on Syria. You have uh, ratcheting up of tensions between Israel and Iran. Something going on there. It's clearly not a zero probability event. The actual probability is pretty hard to guess. You now, it looks like Iraq could easily well be descending into civil war in one queue. That all of these things threaten volumes of oil that are you know, two to three million barrels a day when you're talking about Iraq or Iran. And you, the world is only operating with about two and a half million barrels a day of spare capacity as it is. Saudi Arabia. That's virtually all in Saudi Arabia. So when you hear the story about Iran, the answer is often, oh, but Saudi Arabia can make up the difference. You don't think it's necessarily uh, that clear of an answer? Well, if the world was to feel comfortable operating with zero spare capacity, and let's not forget, you know, we have the Saudis' word that they have two and a half million barrels a day of spare capacity. You know, after Libya, the Saudis were very loud, very vocal, saying that they were putting an extra million barrels a day of oil on the, on the water. We didn't see that. We think they put about 500,000 barrels a day of oil on the water. So there's two possible interpretations there. One is that they don't have the oil. We don't think that's the case, but that's one uh, possibility. The more plausible possibility is that the Saudis are very comfortable with $120 crude. $120 Brent crude. Well, that's where it went to uh, mm -hmm. post Libya. You know, I mean, WTI is really a separate animal. It really, right. you know, oil is only that cheap in the mid-continent. But even there, the ARB has been coming in pretty fast. Seth, sounds like it's going to be an interesting year for you. We think so. <laughs> Thanks for giving us uh, your projection.